Hi, I'm Liz Scheip, and welcome to episode two of Reconstructing Grimm. So at the end of the last shoot, I told you that the next shoot we're gonna do is Beauty and the Beast. I lied a little bit. See, what happened was, due to this crazy random happenstance, we actually ended up uh, having a publication ask us to do a photo series that had to do with fairies. And so we put the brakes on Beauty and the Beast, it is coming, but later, and we're switching over to do a fairy, fairy tale photo shoot. Now that proved a lot more difficult than I really could have ever imagined it being, because fairies weren't really known as these magical, wonderful beings of light until the Victorian era. Prior to that, uh, Sir William Shakespeare, they were mischievous and a little bit naughty, but on the whole they were pretty good. And then prior to that, they were evil. They would steal your children, they would kill your children, they would drown people. It was really not very nice, and that was not something that this publication was looking for. I spent a couple of hours just kind of searching, looking through all of my material, couldn't find anything. It was nearly at the end of my rope, and I looked down and I was wearing a Tinkerbell t-shirt, and I felt like a moron. Um, but after that, we had a direction, we knew where we were going. So now I am most definitely confident in telling you that the next shoot is going to be Tinkerbell themed, more specifically Peter Pan themed. And I can't back out on it because I've already made the costume. Peter Pan was created by Scottish novelist J.M. Barrie in 1902 for the novel The Little White Bird. However, Peter didn't become the iconic character we all know him as today until 1904, when there was a full-scale stage production of Peter Pan. Since then, this has been retold and reimagined in various forms of stage, film, and fiction over and over and over again. So when I sat down to wade through all of the source material, I was a little overwhelmed. However, after watching and reading and just looking through everything I could find, I eventually found a, a version that I think everybody will really, really like. So I hope you come back to take a look at the photos and to take a look at the behind the scenes uh, footage on our next photo shoot. If you like the Tinkerbell costume, tune in for the fourth episode, your next update, because I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the Tinkerbell dress for yourself. More often than not, I'm asked, how do I get this look for myself? Can you make this dress for me? Where can I buy this pattern? Previously, I've always draped the patterns kind of on myself and on my own body. For this shoot, I tried something a little bit new. I chose a pre-existing pattern, I tweaked it very, very little, and I'll show you how to make those tweaks for yourself. So you can get a reconstructing Grimm creation all for yourself. One of those sort of teach a man to fish type of deals. So, hope to see you for that episode, and more on that later. Peter Pan is going to be the next shoot. After that, we're definitely doing Beauty and the Beast. However, after that, I want to try something a little bit new. I'm going to let you guys pick. I'm going to give you three options, and you guys can write in the comments, you can email me, you can do whatever you want to let me know which one of these three options you'd like to see us do next at Reconstructing Grimm. Option A, should we do Sleeping Beauty? Option B, should we do Arabian Nights? Option C, should we do Hansel and Gretel? Let me know. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Reconstructing Grimm.